Rattle 40 is a very powerful SARM. It works very well for increasing strength. Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to talk about Rad 140, my experience with it, and my opinion on that. Rad 140, as you guys probably already know, is my favorite SARM. Um, my favorite brand is Kimyo. As you guys know, I have a landing page with a whole bunch of different companies on there. So if you guys are wanting to know the brands that I like, that I use, that I recommend, um, you can click on the link in the bio in the video description or the bio if you're watching on Instagram. And uh, there's a whole list there that I keep updated. Uh, but this video is about Rad 140. Um, so as you guys know, I've taken pretty much all the different SARMs over the last couple of years. I've done progress videos. I've talked about. Hope you guys enjoy this video. It's a compilation of the last six years of me utilizing Rad 140. So I'm going to start off talking about some of the benefits. As you guys know, it's probably one of the most potent products you could possibly use for increasing strength and aggression. It works extremely well for increasing muscle size too, assuming your diet is dialed in correctly. Um, it is probably the number one SARM used out there and it is, like I said, extremely potent. So if you're looking to grow a lot of muscle mass very quickly, it pairs very well with something like MK677 or LGD4033. It's always good to have a test base underneath that, but I will talk more about that stuff later on in this video. At the end, I'll be talking about side effects as well and how to prevent some of those. So I hope you enjoy this content. Once again, SARMs are not meant for human use. I'm not condoning their use, and I hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you. Give you guys an update on the Kimyo Labs Rad 140 and YK11 stack. I've been taking them now for, I think today is day five. <clears throat> uh, day four, actually. And so far, the Rad 140 seems to be far more potent than the Proven Peptides brand, which is, you know, a good sign <clears throat> as far as I'm concerned. The Rad 140 right now, I'm at 30 milligrams a day, <clears throat> and I feel more aggressive and pissy than I did when I was taking 600 milligrams a day of testosterone. So for those of you who have taken testosterone before and, and in a comparable dose, you kind of know how aggressive you get and you're pissy all the time, frustrated all the time. And I feel more so on the Rad 140 than I did on the actual testosterone. As I just upped the dosage on the uh, Rad 140 yesterday from 20 milligrams to 30 milligrams and the difference in aggression was immediate. So I do believe Kimyo is probably a little bit more pure, maybe dosed a little bit higher than proven peptides. So take that into consideration when you're trying to decide where you're going to source your products from. Remember in the link below, you guys have access to all my different research companies and supplement brands. Cameo to me is like the pinnacle of product quality and purity when it comes to SARMs. And again, SARMs aren't meant for human consumption. I'm not condoning their use. But if you're going to buy SARMs for your lab rat or whatever, make sure you're buying it from a legitimate source, okay? And, and the sources I have on that page, I trust. All right. So I had a, a video subscriber, a YouTube subscriber message me a while back. And it got me thinking, and he said, I've been cycling Rad 140 for, I think it was like 10 weeks. And he said, one of the things I've noticed, he'd put on a bunch of muscle, a bunch of strength. One of the things he noticed though, was that his hair was turning darker and his gray hair was going away. And I was like, huh? And I started thinking about that. And if you guys watch my transformation video, uh, you know that I went through a pretty bad divorce about three years ago. <clears throat> and at that time, I had a lot of gray hair, all right? I kept my hair pretty short, so it wasn't really visible. But right before a haircut, it was starting to grow out, and you could see a lot of gray hair, especially around the sides and the back. Well, I started taking SARMs, I don't know, 18 months ago, and my gray hair is gone. And I'm not saying it's because of SARMs, but I don't know what else would cause the reversal in gray hair. And it's interesting that other guys who've taken Rad 140 have noticed a reduction in gray hair. So Rad 140 gave me extreme gains in strength more than anything else, okay? The number one benefit for, for me was the strength gain. I did get a lot of aggression from it. It was a lot like testosterone. So for those of you who have used testosterone in the past, you probably had that feeling of aggression. For me, it lasted about a week, maybe 10 days, every time I would up my dose or start testosterone, okay? And yes, I'm on TRT year-round. If you've been a subscriber, you know that already, so I don't need to go over that. But every time I've gone above my TRT dose, like uh, from 200 milligrams where I'm at up to like 400 or 500 milligrams, I'll feel a week or 10 days of aggression, you know, just being pissy. You feel that, you know, strength in the gym. You just feel phenomenal for, you know, that, that week or 10 days, whatever. Rad 140 does the same thing to me. 
maybe even more than actual injectable testosterone. Obviously, you're gonna need to get a good source. Um, you guys know Kimio's my favorite. Rats Army is an excellent brand too if you guys are wanting something that's flavored. But this is very important because so many of the products out there are tainted or underdosed or whatever else. So for example, I think it was uh, Medfit RX recently had some issues because they were producing SARMs and they had anabolic steroids in them. So when you're buying something that's contaminated with other products, knowing the half-life is kind of irrelevant because if you think you're getting pure RAD140 with a 60 hour half-life and you're buying something with D-Ball that has a much shorter half-life of maybe like six hours or whatever, you know, that's really gonna throw off the blood levels in your system. Not knowing what you're taking can be a very bad thing, especially when you start stacking other things on top of it. So make sure you're buying from a good source, okay? Everybody reacts to these products differently, and that's something we're still coming to understand since there aren't enough scientific research studies on these products. We don't understand how they're affecting people 100%, okay? They're not approved for human use. That's one of the reasons. There's not enough research on them yet. Um, so we don't know why some people suffer from insomnia on it and others don't. Just like we don't know why some SARMs cause hair loss in some people and don't in others. And then in the some people who don't have the hair loss issues with one product have hair loss products with another SARM which doesn't cause hair loss in the first. Right? There's too many variables here to really understand why. But yes, insomnia is an issue with RAD140. I've heard guys say that insomnia is also an issue with other products. But that being said, it's not a super, super common issue. Um, a lot of it would depend also on dose. I've seen guys say they didn't have any issues at 10 milligrams. They started to at 20. When they hit 30, they couldn't sleep at all. Some guys are saying that they can take some melatonin with it and they still sleep just fine. Um, other guys say it doesn't matter what they take, they can't sleep when they're on it. So that all goes back to there's a lack of research on these products and we don't understand how they're affecting everybody 100%, okay? So keep that in mind anytime you go to try something like this. This is why I always recommend to people when you're going to be trying a new product, you start with one product. You don't just go out there and say, oh, I'm going to take these five new products. I've never taken these five products before, but I'm suddenly going to go ahead and take a max dose of all five at the same time. And now I'm having side effects and I don't understand why. I don't know which one is causing the side effects, right? So when it comes to something like this, and I'm not encouraging SARM use, right? But what I'm saying is people who start using these products should be starting with one at a time, minimum dose, work the dose up, run it for a while and see how their body reacts, then drop that, move to the next one, do the same thing, drop that, move to the next one, do the same thing, and understand how your body is affected by each of these before trying to stack them. It's extremely important in my opinion. I'm not a doctor, that's not medical advice, but that's the biggest problem I see with guys out there experimenting with these type of products. We don't have the research behind them in the first place, and then you go and take all these unapproved products and you just stack them together at a huge dose and you just wonder what's going on. And nobody can tell you, not even the gym bros can tell you because you don't know how any of those affect you individually and all of a sudden you have all these side effects and you don't know why. Chances are it's one of them and not all of them and uh, maybe it's a combination of them that's causing the issues. So that's something that needs to be figured out carefully with a doctor's supervision, right? Rad140 is suppressive. There are a lot of people out on YouTube right now and on different forums and with uh, various websites that talk about how, oh, you don't need a PCT from SARMs. SARMs aren't suppressive. They won't shut you down. My experience is that Rad140 is suppressive, definitely, especially if you're doing a higher dose like 30 milligrams a day like I was doing for a while. It's definitely going to shut down your testosterone production. Now, that only applies, obviously, if you are going at it natural. If you're already on a TRT base, you're already shut down so that you don't have to worry about it shutting you down more, right? Okay, so likewise, if you are on TRT and you take something like RAD140 or S23 that's even more suppressive, you're not having to worry about that shutdown because you have that endogenous testosterone in your system already from the injections, right? So you're not going to have to worry so much about a PCT. Now, in my opinion, everybody should be running a PCT all the time for every cycle, basically, even if you are on TRT, and that's kind of contradicting what I just said, but here's why. When you're on TRT as a base, it's important to be doing cycles of HCG throughout the year in order to keep our testicles working. If nothing else, it keeps them from just shriveling up to the size of a pea and disappearing, right? So running the cycles of HCG throughout the year is kind of like running a mini PCT, right? 
the difference between somebody on TRT and somebody that doesn't have that testosterone base who takes a SARM, when you get shut down from the SARM, you're going to need to restart your testosterone, just like if you were ending a steroid cycle. So that's where the HCG comes in. But a lot of guys worry about estrogen, and I think there's too much concern about estrogen when it comes to PCT and SARMs, okay? When it comes to steroids, yes, handling prolactin and estrogen is very important during a PCT. However, those are hormonal, right? SARMs are selective androgen receptor modulators. They're not hormonal, okay? They're just attaching to the androgen receptors. They're not affecting an increase in estrogen. Now, that being said, the confusion comes in because if you have no testosterone in your body and your estrogen level is still at the normal level, it's going to seem like you have a high estrogen level because the ratio is out of whack. So guys go out there and instead of worrying about getting their testosterone going, they worry about knocking their estrogen down and it throws everything off whack even more. So in my opinion, a PCT from SARMs would be HCG and that would be about it. But anyway, that's going completely off topic. Um, RAD 140 for me worked best at 30 milligrams per day. Um, to me, I didn't feel a lot at 10 milligrams a day except the aggression. I didn't see much in strength gains or muscle gains at 10 milligrams a day. 20, there was a little bit more. When I hit 30, that's when I started feeling a lot of aggression, strength gains, and I started seeing some muscle being added to my body. So overall, RAD 140 is my favorite. To me, it has the lowest. It messed with my cholesterol levels just a little bit on my labs, and that was it, okay? Five things. I'm gonna get right into those real quick. Make sure if you haven't subscribed already that you do so. Also, check out all my SARM series. I've covered every SARM in at least one video. Uh, so if you have questions about other SARMs, check those out as well. So the most common thing that I see with guys in RAD 140 is suppressed testosterone. I've talked about this in a number of videos before. Guys will hop on a cycle of SARMs and something like RAD140 is very good at suppressing natural testosterone production. And guys will start using them without having a testosterone base underneath of that. Now, you don't necessarily have to be on TRT year round in order to run a cycle of SARMs, right? So a lot of guys can supplement with something like a good DHEA based type pro hormone. Um, I've talked about gear cream from muscle gels is a good one. Uh, and so something like that can work as a test base throughout the duration of the cycle. And that's simply to keep testosterone levels up during the cycle. Now, once you quit taking the testosterone base, you're gonna have to talk about running a PCT, right? That is another issue you guys run into. If they're on a temporary testosterone product, they're gonna to have to have some kind of PCT when they come off of there to make sure their natural testosterone production is back up to where it should be, back to the levels it was prior to or above running the cycle of RAD140. The next issue is hair loss. I have a lot of guys commenting about how they have hair loss associated with RAD140. There's some things you guys can do you can try out to possibly mitigate that hair loss. This is no guarantee, but something like minoxidil may help with the hair loss or slowing the hair loss or even reversing it. Also, also a nearazole shampoo can be very helpful. Uh, so maybe something like that would help you guys that do have hair loss issues. I don't know 100% why guys, some guys are losing hair on RAD140 and others don't. I'm very susceptible to hair loss and I don't have that issue with RAD140. So not really sure how to help you guys on that one, but maybe try out the Neurozol and the Minoxidil and let me know if that helps you guys out. The next big issue that I suffered from quite a bit was aggression. Now RAD140 makes me very aggressive. Now it's not something like I'm going to go out there and start fighting everybody, but it's definitely a very powerful aggression feeling, right? I feel very frustrated, aggressive. I was getting into arguments at work all the time while I was taking RAD 140, and it's over just completely ridiculous stuff, but you just get pissed off, and there's no way to really, you can't really calm yourself, right? You just, you just kind of blow up. It's like roid rage, right? So it's actually more uh, of an issue for me than taking high doses of testosterone. So you could do, I can put myself with a good dose of testosterone propanate, right? That hits your bloodstream really, really quick. It gives me some good aggression, right? But taking the RAD 140 was almost, well, I, I think it was more of an aggressive factor than taking the testosterone, even a high quick dose like that. So keep that in mind. If you're going to be taking RAD 140, you're probably going to have some aggression issues, probably fighting with your significant other, your coworkers, etc. So keep that in mind. Maybe let them know that you're using something uh, so that they can be aware and not try to push your buttons or fight back so much, whatever. But keep that in mind if you're going to be experimenting with something like RAD140. Another issue I see all the time is not getting enough protein. So 
my, I'm bad at this myself, right? A lot of guys will go out there and they'll start taking a SARM or a steroid and they will utilize it for months or even years, right? And they'll wonder why they're not growing or maybe they grow first and then they stop growing. And so many times I see it revolving around diet. And like I said, I'm bad about it myself, but most people just simply don't eat enough protein. And that's what it really boils down to. And I'm not a nutritionist. I'm sure there's plenty of nutritionist gurus on YouTube who will be happy to correct this video on this, but you need the protein in your diet in order to build and maintain the muscle. And that's all there is to it. Now, other calorie sources, carbs, fat, etc. Yes, those are important too. But the number one thing I see is guys not eating enough protein. And most guys think that they are eating enough protein. They'll just say, okay, well, I'm eating red meat every day. I'm eating eggs every day. But if they sat down and actually did the math, I would be willing to bet that 90% of the guys out there utilizing PEDs are not getting enough protein. The last issue I see, which isn't so common, but this is a problem, is guys lifting too heavy. Rad 140 increases strength very, very well. Now, the strength increases you're going to have from Rad 140 are going to make you want to lift, lift heavier weights, right? You're going to want to set new PRs. If you're benching 405 for the first time in your life, you're like, oh my God, I want to do this every day I'm in the gym, right? Uh, that can be very stressful on your joints. So utilizing a good joint supplement, something that's designed to help your joints, maybe a fish oil base or DHA, I think is another one. Uh, just a basic joint supplement can help you guys out quite a bit. There are plenty of those on Amazon. You can go check out, uh, make sure it's a good quality one. You don't want to get something cheap, right? But make sure you're getting some kind of joint supplementation in there and that you're not lifting too heavy all the time. You want to let your joints and your tendons strengthen along with your muscles, right? And you don't want to risk damaging those. Having a damaged tendon or joint can set you back months or even years or maybe even for life if you really damage it badly and you don't want to do that. So the point of taking something like Rab 40 and getting your strength increases out of it is to build more muscle, increase your strength, et cetera, for long-term benefit, right? You don't want to go to the gym and set new PRs every week for six weeks and then damage yourself so bad you can't go to the gym for the next three years, right? There's no point in doing that. So keep that in mind. When you're lifting weights, it's going to feel light. You're going to want to do more reps. You're going to do more weight. And just be cognizant of the fact that you can easily push yourself past the limitation of your tendons and your joints. Now, all that being said, Rad 140 is a very powerful SARM. It works very well for increasing strength and muscle size, assuming you're getting enough protein in your diet. I've talked in a couple of videos recently about how I've been adding more essential amino acids to my diet to help increase the amount in my body. I'm doing that as a supplementation too, in addition to the protein intake that I get from whole foods. Like I said, I'm on TRT, so I'm not having to worry about a PCT, all right? So this video was intended to be about Rad 140, kind of got into PCT a little bit, but <clears throat> there you guys have it. That's my favorite SARM. If I only had one SARM or one PED to use the rest of my life, it would be the Rad 140. So there you guys have it. I'm gonna talk about sources here just in brief real quick. As you guys know, I'm constantly working on having the best sources for all the different products I talk about. Everything from SARMs to pro hormones, post cycle therapy products, regular supplements. If you go to the link in the video description, you can get discounts on all of those companies that I have in there, anywhere from 10 to 20% off of their products by using that promo code. And that list is constantly updated to be the best in the industry. Number one sources that I can find are there on that list. What is half-life? Half-life is the time it takes from ingesting a drug to when half that dose is in your system. All right, so let's say you got a half-life of 12 hours and you take 100 milligrams of something, whether it's oral or injectable, doesn't really matter, it's still gonna have a half-life, right? So you take, you, you take a product that's got a 12-hour half-life and you take 100 milligrams of it. That means at 12 hours, you're gonna have 50 milligrams of that product in your system still. Now, if that makes sense, then we're gonna move on to talking about um, how you achieve a steady state. So basically, there are online calculators that you can use. You just Google them, um, they'll pop up, and you can calculate stuff that way if you know the half-life. But basically, steady state takes roughly five times the half-life to reach the steady state in your system. So if you have a half-life of 24 hours, basically it's going to be five days until you reach steady state. Today on Rad 140, all of the studies done were on rats, okay? And somehow I missed that there was one human study done with Rad 140. It's a clinical study done. It's important to note that all of the patients in the study were female cancer patients. They were positive for cancer, and the study was in relation to 
how RAD 140 would affect the cancer, okay? So it's not really conclusive when it comes to males bodybuilding with the product or strength training with the product because that's not the focus of the study. But I will point out that the study was in three different dose ranges, 50 milligrams per day, 100 milligrams per, per day, and 150 milligrams per day. So these, all of these dose ranges that they were doing in this experiment were higher than the maximum dose recommended by Bro Science online, okay? And only the 150 milligram per day group saw some negative side effects from it. All right, so in the study they found that RAD 140 in humans has a 60 hour half-life. And like I said before this, all the studies were done on rats. And so prior videos were based on those studies. And RAD 140 in rats has a half-life of 20 hours. Okay, so there's been a lot of confusion online. A lot of people putting out different numbers, you know, anywhere from you know, like 12 hours to 24 hours, 36 hours, whatever. But these are the studies in rats, 20 hour half-life in humans, 60 hour half-life. And that one study in humans is where that 60 hour half-life comes from. And if you guys want a more in-depth version of this study, you guys can go over and check out Derek and more place more dates. He has a video where he really breaks it down. Um, he's a lot better as you guys know with the pharmacology and explaining how that all works in the human system. As you guys know, if you're looking for high quality SARMs, pro hormones, etc., you can go to the link in the video description. All of my sources that I use and trust are there with discount codes. So you guys can save money and get high quality products from reputable companies, which is very important. Okay, <clears throat> don't take SARMs. Okay, so while I took RAD 140, I've taken it many times at many different dosages. My preferred dose is 30 milligrams per day, okay? So RAD 140 has a really long half-life. I'm not gonna get into that. That's not what this video is about. But I did get labs done while I was on RAD 140 at 30 milligrams per day, and I had been for about five weeks at the time. When I got my labs done, it raised my liver enzymes by one point. One enzyme was raised by one point. So very, very minimal effect on my liver enzymes. Now, if you're concerned about stuff like that, it's very important to be taking cycle support, such as Tudka and Milk Thistle are very good for supporting your liver while taking anything oral. Okay, and I'm not a doctor, I'm not giving medical advice here, whatever else, but what I'm saying is I'm careful about taking liver support when I got my labs done, I hadn't been very good about it, but I was taking Tudka when I remembered to. <clears throat> anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. It helps out the algorithm a ton, and I appreciate the support and growing this channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.